Hey, what's up everyone? Hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another tutorial. In this video, we're going to look at how charts work inside of Bubble and how to take data from our database, group it together and present it to our users in visually interesting ways. So this is a topic that was requested of me by a student of mine inside of a coaching session. He was having trouble understanding how charts work inside of Bubble. So we'll take a look at that here. If you do want to sign up for a coaching session with me, by the way, if you're having trouble with anything inside of your app, um, I'll leave a link for that inside of the description of this video. So let's get into it. And the first thing that I want to do is go to my plugins tab here. I have two different plugins installed. This first one is the chart element plugin that is built and maintained by Bubble. And this is what we're going to use to chart some very basic data. So right now, if I go to my database, I have a few different data types set up right now from previous videos. Um, but what we're going to take a look at is this purchase data type right here. The purchase data type has an amount field, which is a number, and a date field, which is a date. And if I go into my database and look at all of the different purchases here, I've just created some dummy data that we can play around with and, and visualize. So let's go to the design tab and I'm going to take this line bar chart element. Where is it? It's right here. And drag it onto the screen, just like this. This is the element that comes with the bubble plugin. And the bubble plugin is really great if you have kind of simple data to visualize. It can be a little bit limiting in terms of, um, well, just what's available to you and how you want to present this data to your user. But if you have a simple kind of, uh, if a simple display that you're trying to show, it can work quite well. I'm gonna leave my chart type as line for right now. And for the type of data, I want to display purchase data to my user. Now, let's, you know, one question that you want to ask yourself, obviously, when charting out data is what do we actually want to show our user? And how do we want to present this data? And let's just say for the sake of this example that I want to show how many purchases, so the number of purchases that occurred on my app um, in, for each day over the past week. So if I look back over the past week, I want to look at each day, count how many purchases occurred on each day. All right. The type of data that I want to show here then is going to be, we're going to go to purchase and the data source is where this can get kind of tricky. So we're going to start our expression here by just doing a simple search for purchases in our database. We're not going to add any constraints. And this is where we have to start think about, thinking about how we want to group data together. And there's a really powerful method that Bubble gives us here. If I click on more and start typing in group by, we can use this method right here to take the purchases that are going to be returned from our search here and to group them together into certain buckets uh, that we can then make calculations on or do whatever we want to do with, right? Now, I'd encourage all of you, if you do struggle with charts, to go read the documentation for grouped by. Bubble's documentation on this is pretty, pretty great, and it's definitely worth a read. But in our case right here, we're looking at purchases, and we want to add a new grouping. Now, the field that we want to group by is going to be this date field here. Typically, if you were looking at this example in real life, you would probably want to group them together by created date. The reason I created this date field was just for this example, and this is supposed to simulate the date that the purchase was created. Obviously, I created them like really fast, though, so I wanted to create a date field just to simulate that. But we're going to group things together by date, each of these purchases. And for the type of grouping, we have a few different options here because this is a date field. Bubble saying, okay, do you want to group by an exact date, which you rarely want to do? Um, do you want to group them together by day or by month? In my case, if I think if I'm thinking about this example, I want to group these purchases together by day. Each day will have a certain number of purchases that fall into that group. Now the interval, I'm just going to type one here because I just want to go one day at a time. 
And for the starting date, I said that I wanted to go over the last week. So what we'll do is we'll say the current date and time. And I want to go back in time seven days. So I'll click on more and say plus days. And we'll just type a negative number in here. So plus negative seven days. I'm also going to check this box that says do not skip empty groups. Because if there were zero purchases on a day, on any day in the past seven days, I still want to see this here. All right, so we'll check this box. And now Bubble's going to ask for an ending date. In my case, I want to go right up until the current date and time. So I'll click here, just say current date and time. This will be the logic, this will be the setup for our group by method. So again, just to recap what we're doing here, we're searching for purchases in the database and we're grouping them together by day. So Bubble will look at all purchases last, um, last Monday and group them together, all purchases last Tuesday and group them together. And that will be, um, each of those groups will be, well, last Monday, for example, will go on the x-axis here. All of the days will be on the x-axis. And how many purchases occurred in each one of those, on each one of those days, that will be reflected on the y-axis. That will actually be the value here, okay? Now, moving on, we have this other piece that we want to look at here, which is aggregation. Aggregation, you can think of it as, okay, now that we have these groups of data, what do we want to look at with each group, right? An aggregation is how, what calculations do we want to make on this group of data that we have? So I'm going to click add a new aggregation. And the aggregation that I want here, one of the most common ones, which we're going to use in this example, is a count. And that's simply count how many items fall into that bucket, right? So if there were 10 purchases on a single day, the count would be 10, right? So that's what we'll leave right here. And now I can close that off. And you can see that the type of data automatically changes from purchases to a grouping now. So we have groups of data. The value expression is what we want each group's value to be. Like what is the y-axis value going to be? And in this case, what are we interested in? We're interested in this count right here, the count of each group that's going to be represented on our chart. So for value expression, we'll say current points. And look at that, we have this count right here that I can access. And the label expression is gonna be what's on the x-axis here. So what am I interested in? What, how do I wanna display this to my user? Well, I wanna display obviously on the x-axis what day it, what the relevant day is for each bucket, right? Each group. So we can say current points date. And let's just format that date. Let's just format it as, as this actually right here. So month, day, and then year. And we'll click on preview and see how that looks. Let's center this too. Okay. Type in the password here. Whoops. And here we go. Okay. So there we go. We can see this nice looking chart here, right? Last uh, February 28th is when, I'm, when this, uh, when seven days ago was. So we had one purchase on that date, two, and, and so on, right? A nice, simple visualization here. So, so far, so good for this example. And again, the bubble plugin works really great for simple data plotting like this. But if you want to do something a little bit more complex, let's say, for example, that in addition to this week's purchases, I wanted to plot another line here that represented last week's purchases to show what the difference between the two weeks is. Whenever I want to do something like that, I'm probably going to need a solution that's going to allow me to do something a little bit more complex like that. And there are a few, well, there are quite a few different chart plugins that, that you can use that will allow you to do more complex plotting of data. One that we're going to take a look at today is called Apex Charts JS. So I've already downloaded this. Now, this is a paid plugin, but with all paid plugins, you can sample it uh, and subscribe to it, and you're, you'll only be charged a prorated amount, right? So you can also, too, if you 
take a look at Apex Charts JS um, and go to the plugin page here. You can also go and take a look at the demo version, which is right over here to see what kind of stuff you can do. There's lots of cool stuff that you can do with this plugin. There's another great one, I think it's called Chart.js that I've used in the past that allows you to do some, some complex stuff too. But yeah, pretty neat stuff right out of right out of the box with this plugin. So what we're gonna do, I already have this plugin installed. And like I said, we're going to chart, we're gonna use this, we're gonna use an area chart with multiple lines. And in addition to showing this week's purchases, we'll chart that against last week's purchases. So we'll go back into the editor here, go over to the design tab and let's delete this chart right here. And what was that called? Area chart, multiple lines. Here we go. Let's just drag this onto the page. Now what's cool about this is we can, how this works is we have multiple series of data that we can plot here. So for series one name, for example, let's use, we're gonna have two series here. One's gonna be this week's purchases. The next one's gonna be last week's purchases. So we'll say purchases this week as the name for series one and purchases last week. It's a name for series two. Now, despite the fact that we're using a different plugin here and that things are set up differently, what we just learned about in terms of grouping data together, that concept, that idea is really what's fundamental when it comes to charts, because that's ultimately what you're doing. You're taking different pieces of data, different bits of data and figuring out how to group them together in and then present them in, in visually interesting ways, right? So here using multiple lines for series one, we're actually going to do the exact same thing. We're going to group things together um, by date, right? So we're gonna go over the last seven days. Each day is gonna be a single group of data and we're going to count how many items are in each group. Actually, in this case, we'll do something different because we already looked at the count aggregation. So we'll make this a little bit more interesting. But for series one data, all I'm gonna do, if we look at the documentation here, it says y-axis data should evaluate to a list of numbers here. So we'll look at, we'll, we'll complete this in a second, but first we're gonna start out the same, just like we did last time. We're gonna say, do a search for purchases from our database. I'm not too concerned about constraints here. If you needed to add some constraints, you can add them here, obviously, but we're gonna search for purchases and then let's take the result of this search and group them together. So we'll say group by. And the grouping that we want to, the field that we want to group by is going to be the date here. So look at all of these purchases date and group them together by day. We'll set this up just like we did last time. The interval will be one day. Starting date will be seven days ago. So current date and time plus negative seven days. And we won't skip empty groups. Ending date will just say is current date and time. Now for an aggregation, instead of doing count, which is what we did last time, let's do the sum. So again, what are we doing? We're looking at each grouping and watch what happens when I click on sum. It's going to say, which field do you wanna calculate this sum on? So in each grouping, I wanna look at the amount field, which again, if we go to the database is just a field that I created on this purchase data type, go through each purchase in each group and sum up the amount so that we have, that's, that's the aggregation that we're gonna calculate, right? So, Let's go back into this expression. Group by date aggregation one is gonna be the sum and the field to calculate on is gonna be the amount. So far, so good. And then what we wanna do here, because this plugin, what they want is a list of numbers, right? So what I'm going to do is we'll say, we'll click on more and we'll say each item's sum of amount. Now each item in this case, what is that referring to? It's referring to each grouping here. So each groupings sum of, basically the sum of each grouping is the list of numbers 
that we're going to give to this plugin. And because if I hover over this, you can see it evaluates to a list of numbers, which is exactly what this plugin documentation is telling you it wants. So we get this nice blue expression here. Series two data, we want to make sure that, well, it says make sure you have the same data points for the y-axis as for the x-axis. We'll get to the x-axis in a moment here. But this is basically going to be the exact same expression. So I'm going to go up here. We'll say copy expression, paste expression. The only thing that's going to be different in this case, because this is purchases last week, is going to be what? It's going to be the starting date here in this grouping. So instead of going back seven days, we'll go back 14 days. And the ending date will be current date and time plus negative seven days. So we're just going back a week further into the past. We'll still use the exact same aggregation. And that looks good for series two. So we'll plot these two against each other. Now I'm also going to go down and one thing that's cool about this plugin is it allows you to customize how this data looks. So for series, for chart one color, we'll leave this as blue for chart two, because this is going to be last week's. So if I'm thinking about this from a user experience, user design perspective, maybe I want last week's data to be a little bit more grayed out, less prominent than this week's data, which might be more important in this case. So I'll change the chart two color to be a little bit lighter gray. And then the last thing that we need to do here is series category. So if we click on show documentation, we see X axis data. In this case, they want a list of texts, not a list of numbers. You can use the formatted as. Let's start from the top again. In our case, really what we're gonna do is we're going to copy this expression up here. Or actually, let's copy the first one because we're only going back. What do we want? We want the last seven days. That's gonna be the X axis, right? The text for those last seven days. So we'll copy this expression. I'm gonna paste it in the series category here. And let's see, we're saying search for purchases, grouping them by date. And what we're going to do instead of saying the sum of date, we'll say each items, or sorry, instead of saying each item's sum of the amount, which will evaluate to a list of numbers that we were using earlier, in our case, we're gonna say each item's date. And we will say each item's date, each item formatted as, there we go. If we format a date like this, then that will evaluate to a list of text. List of texts, plural. There we go. And because we formatted each date, this evaluates to a list of texts, which is what this plugin wants, and we get a nice blue expression here. So let's click on preview and see how that looks. And there we go. Pretty cool. Um, we can obviously, we might want to change this, uh, this green color right here, but you can see that we are presenting this data in a pretty interesting way to the user. This could be, you can imagine situations where it might be useful to see this week's purchases in terms of the amount, right? Each value here is the sum of the amount of this particular grouping. Um, and we're, we can chart that against each other. Okay. So anyways, I hope you found that useful. If you take away one thing from this video, just remember that concept of grouping data together because that's really what is fundamental when it comes to talking about charting data. And also, if you, I mean, there's Apex Chart JS, which is what we've been looking at here in this example. There's also Chart JS, I believe. There's also a number of different libraries out there. If you ever really wanted to, if you, if neither of these plugins or any of the plugins in the Bubble ecosystem did what you wanted to, they are pretty complex and you can do quite a bit of stuff with them. But there are also different libraries that you can use to build your own plugins too, um, if you wanted a more custom solution. So just keep that in mind as well. Anyways, I hope you found that useful. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like the video if you did find it useful, subscribe to the channel, sign up for a coaching session if you need help with your app, and I will see you again later. Bye-bye.